here I am. I've taken this fantasy. I have made it into a theory. And then now I've said, okay, I'm going to act on this theory and it's going to become a fact. It's going to become a reality. So this is always how we traverse the dream. We start with the fantasy, we take it into a theory, and then we make it a fact. The problem is most of us never get over to here. We're stuck between the fantasy and the theory. We're stuck between the dream and the theory. We get stuck right here. It's like a big snow bank right here. And we need a snowplow to get us out of this thing because you can't think of how it's going to happen. You can't think of how it's going to happen. And so the theory breaks down. What you've got to do is you've got to almost leapfrog past the how and just say, you know what? I really believe that I can build this out. I really believe that I can build this company. I really believe that I can go in this direction. I feel it in my bones and I know that I can move forward in this direction. However, I find a way to move forward. That's when you make the theory and that's when you begin to act to create the fact. Okay. So what we're going to do here is take you past the dream phase and get you into the theory phase and get you into the act phase so that you're creating that reality on the other side, on the other side of the rainbow where the pot of gold is. It's a beautiful thing. So, um, you know, I think that as you start moving forward and you start making decisions on what you're going to do in to change your life in the next eight weeks, stop with being stopped. Keep telling yourself, okay, I'm not going to let that stop me. The only questions I'm going to ask myself, do I want it? Am I able? Am I willing? Okay. So when you decide to take the action, when you decide to say, okay, I've got this in my head, I'm going to take the action. This is where the real decision happens. So Bob was the first person to teach me the difference between wanting a thing and deciding on a thing. Wanting something means I'm going to do this as soon as. I'm going to do this as soon as the kids are out of school. I'm going to do this as soon as I get divorced. I'm going to do this as soon as I get a raise at my job. I'm going to do this as soon as I inherit from my mother's will. I'm going to do this as soon as I lose weight. I'm going to do this as soon as I'm more fit. I'm going to, you hear this all the time. You hear this in your head as well. I'm going to do this as soon as. I'm going to do this as soon as. Or you think, this is another wanting. I really want to do this, but he won't let me. I really want to do this, but the economy is so bad. I really want to do this, but I don't have enough money in my bank account. I really want to do this, but, 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 but. Then you're stuck wanting. You're stuck in that desire. You're not moving forward into making the decision. A decision involves nothing else but you and your higher self making an agreement together. Okay? It's not something you have to rely on with anybody else. It's you and your higher self making a decision, making a decision, and then deciding to act in ways that you're not even sure how to act. And this is what I'm going to help you through over the next eight weeks. The fact is this, remember, Napoleon Hill says in his Think and Grow Rich book that the biggest reason for failure of the 30 reasons for failure in his book is indecision. The biggest reason. And the reason most people are indecisive is because they don't know how it can get done. And so they just don't make the decision. But the key here is to remember that all of the successful people you look at Every single person out there, no matter what field they're in, industry they're in, whatever, even if they're slightly more successful than you, they didn't know how to do it either. They didn't know how to do it either, but they made the decision to find a way. And in many cases, in many cases, they would find a mentor who was higher above, who had, who had it going on. Um, you know, uh, I found it interesting that Bob never has asked me how I'm going to get something done. He's never asked me, how are you going to do this? I remember once he called me and he said, he was like, hey, Diane, hey, hey, I was talking to Mark Victor Hansen on the plane. Every time he gets on the plane, you know, something's going to be coming down when he lands. <laughs> so he'd be like, hey, I was talking to Mark Victor Hansen on the plane and we came up with this idea for the 3% club. And so we, we think that we're going to do like four quarterly meetings and, um, and we're going to bring in some guests and stuff. And we're going to have the same people go to each of the four quarterly meetings and it's going to be really great. And he was like, so we want to get a sales letter out 
uh, right away. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, what, well, what are the details of the class? And he was like, I, I don't know. You figure that out. <laughs> you figure that out. You write it in the sales letter. You go, you go. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. So, it's like, so I wrote this thing for people to be in a class for a year, you know, had no idea. And I think we, it was like $6,000 for the class and, and we sold it and we mailed this big, beautiful package out to people for the 3% club. And it sold out in like three days, but it's just absolutely crazy. He never asked me how I was going to do it. His only question was, when are you going to have it done? <laughs> so, so I want you to keep that in mind too, that we really need to get past that how. Um, in one of my other conversations with him, we were talking about me being an outrigger paddler. And I've mentioned this before, where I came from Denver. I had no water in Denver to even paddle around in. I mean, you know, I none, no water. There was like a couple municipal swimming pools maybe, but that was it. And then I decided to go out and paddle in the ocean in a big boat with five other people. And I, I don't know what, I, I loved it. And when I started it, I really loved it. And so I did a lot of it and I rose through ranks really quickly and I had no idea what I was doing. And pretty soon I was like the rookie of the year in California. Well, you know, I didn't have the muscles. I didn't have the, I didn't have the height. I was so short. I was so short. I was like with all these tall women and I was like this five, two little girl and I'd sit in the middle of the boat and I'd barely be above the gunnel of the boat. I'd be like paddling like this, you know, but I had like passion for it. And so somehow I rose through the ranks. It didn't make a lot of people happy because they didn't understand why I was rising through the ranks so quickly, because it's supposed to take a long time to learn how to paddle this way. It's supposed to take a long time to figure this whole thing out. And, and they were angry about the fact that I was moving so quickly up the ranks. I didn't know how I was doing it. And, you know, Bob and I were talking about one day and he said, you know, the thing is, is that you didn't know that you weren't supposed to know. You didn't know that it was supposed to take years. You didn't know that. You just took action. You just took action. You didn't know how. You just took action. You didn't know that that was all supposed to be in your head. So what we're going to do in this class is kind of get rid of that stuff that's in your head that's not even supposed to be there because it's limiting what's going on with that higher self that's buried in you that's ready to shine.